Kelly Saracino, your host for Understanding Plants, a fully online course, part of the Ornamental Horticulture Certificate Program at Longwood Gardens. Today we're going to explore the gorgeous plants that surround us here at Longwood. And joining me is botanical expert Jeff Jabko. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Kelly. I'm glad to be here and excited to share my passion for plants with you and our online audience. Thanks. We're standing in the heart of the horticulture display in the middle of the four and a half acre conservatory where we welcome more than a million and a half visitors annually. I can't get over the diversity of plants in Longwood's collection. Kelly, there are bird of paradise, delphinium, pansies, and creeping fig, just to name a few, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. At Longwood Gardens, there are over 5,000 species, representing 11,200 taxa on display. How many plant species are there in the world? There are roughly 400,000 estimated plant species. We are constantly finding new and exciting species and developing hybrids through exploration and global breeding programs like the Victoria Longwood Hybrid. That is very intriguing. How did the plant world become this diverse? Many of the plants around us are vascular complex organisms, but to really understand the evolutionary path they took to become the towering plants we see today, let's start with their ancient ancestors and head over to the Fern Passage. Great, let's go. This is such a beautiful space, Jeff. I've always enjoyed the textures of the plants that are surrounding us here. What's interesting though is there are no flowers. Kelly, that's absolutely right. Many plants do not have colorful flowers. Ferns are actually a little more complex than the first group of organisms we're going to discuss, the mosses and the bryophytes. Longwood spans over a thousand acres with thousands of plant species. Why does our story begin here with the moss? Fossil records indicate that plants first evolved around 480 million years ago. However, evolutionary genetics may reveal that plants are much older. Mosses, which have been around for close to 450 million years, along with liverworts and hornworts, are some of the earliest plants in the grouping we call bryophytes. They are non-vascular plants that have limited height based on their cellular configuration. They are the ancestors of the plant kingdom. It looks like something is about to bloom. What are these structures on the moss? Kelly, while they don't bloom, mosses use structures like the sporangia to reproduce, and many of them can be colorful and exciting to spot. That is very cool. The next plants to develop were many of the larger seedless vascular plants, like the intriguing lycopod and many of the pterophytes or ferns and fern allies. These early vascular plants first evolved nearly 400 million years ago. Some of my favorite plants in this category are the bird's nest fern, Asplenium astrolasticum, and of course the tree fern, Dixonia. They are not only beautiful plants, but have some amazing bark patterns which are used in artwork and as a growing media for orchids. And what plants then came after the mosses and ferns? Let's venture outside to experience the world of flowering plants. Let's go. We are in Pierce's Woods at the base of one of my favorite trees on the property. Can you tell me about this tree? Sure. This is the ginkgo biloba or maidenhair tree. It's a gymnosperm, and gymnosperms are woody plants. What makes it a woody plant, Jeff? It's a woody plant because of secondary growth. It has additional layers of xylem and phloem, the vascular system, as well as a presence of lignin. What is lignin? So lignin is a chemical compound that is deposited on plant cell walls, and it makes the cells rigid. So what are other features of gymnosperms? Gymnosperms have naked seeds. The seeds are in cones and they're typically wind-pollinated plants. All right. Can you give us some other examples, Jeff, of gymnosperms? Sure. Uh, things like conifers, pine, spruce, fir, juniper, and sequoias, as well as cycads and ginkgos. Well, I know that cycads and sequoias are quite old. How old is the ginkgo family? Fossil records tell us that the ginkgo family is about 245 million years old. What about this ginkgo? Any idea how old this tree is? Well, our best estimate is that it was planted in the 1800s. Oh, how about that? Gymnosperms are the cone-bearing plants, as you have explained, but what about the flowering plants? The flowering plants are angiosperms. Let's look at those next. Great. Let's travel to a beautifully flowered area here at Longwood Gardens, the Flower Garden Walk. Here we are at the Flower Garden Walk, surrounded by these incredible blooms. Most of the plants around us, all that you see in flower, are angiosperms. What are angiosperms? Angiosperms are the flowering plants, those with a true flower that will form seeds enclosed in a fruit. These were the last plants to evolve. How many angiosperms are there? They're the largest group in the plant kingdom, with about 250,000 species. Huh. 
Other than these plants that we see right here, what other plants are angiosperms? Most of the plants that we use in gardening and landscaping are, as well as plants in fruit and vegetable production, in agriculture, and forestry hardwoods. And what are the most common pollinators of angiosperms? That's the reason for these showy flowers, Kelly. They attract insects like bees and moths, and they attract birds like hummingbirds, and some angiosperms are pollinated by wind. Well, Jeff, thank you for defining the differences between gymnosperms and angiosperms, and thank you for broadening your world by learning in ours.